Well, hello everyone. As promised, this video here will be the full rendition of my salvation story. Uh, I had it printed on these little pocket-sized books. Title is My Time in Hell, A Nightmare of Loneliness. Uh, there's a picture of the uh, painting, The Ascent to Empyrean, on the cover. And on the back page, there's a picture of me in the coma. A pretty nifty little thing here. If you want one, uh, just send me a name and address, and uh, I'll get you one. That's while supplies last, as they say. Getting a little lucky here. I've decided, <laughs> instead of looking at my ugly face uh, while I read you this story, I'm going to show you pictures of my family. The 18, if you remember. Uh, the ones who supported me so much and the ones I owe so much to. So I um, hope you enjoy the pictures uh, while I read you the story. Let's hang in there. Enjoy the pictures. And I think that's about it. So let's get started. So the introduction. It says, Welcome to my story, a story of hell in my mind brought to life through a medically induced delirium. I have been told that my delirium was caused by a deep anesthesia needed for an 8-hour spine surgery with the combination of the muscle relaxant Flexerol, though I believe the devil also had his hand in my experience. My mind was trapped within a world of, in itself, full of torture, hate, and loneliness. There were three phases of my journey, all controlled by two guiding principles. I could not leave the area I was trapped in, and I was alone. No family, no friends. My only companions were the demons who were torturing me along with the devil himself who provided the hate. Funny, I had always thought that if the devil wanted my soul, he would have been much nicer in trying to entice me. This fact alone in my mind is what led me to believe that I was already trapped in hell. He had me. The three phases were full of complete and utter despair and sadness. I continued to look for love and or friendship from anyone that would save me from my hell. I remember screaming, why won't anyone help me get out of this place? I came to realize it was the devil that kept me tied to this world, out of reach from the arms of the angels, those who love me, the Holy Spirit. I remember fighting throughout, and I kept fighting until I woke up on the 13th day back in reality. At times, me fighting the confinement and despair caused my captors, or better, the demons, to resort to physically tying me to a bed on multiple occasions. You know, my story has to be told. Not only for my sanity, but to minister to the world how glorious God is and how his unconditional love with the love that finally pulled the devil and his demons out of me. What I made clear before we continue is that when I say I remember, I am remembering within my mind alone. I have no outward memory of what was happening to me in the real world. My family tells me stories of what I did and what actually happened to me. And for so much of it, I apologize for my actions. I am ashamed of the way I acted and I hope that you all forgive me. As mentioned, there were three phases or places in my hell. There was what resembled a cruise ship or a ship of some sort. Since I was confined, I was unable to find out what type of vessel it truly was. I do remember that we were at sea, and phase two, with no transition from the ship, I found myself in some sort of experimentation laboratory, with a lot of machines that looked like they were designed specifically for experiments on people. When I say there was no transition from the ship to the lab, I mean just that. I remember docking somewhere on the ship, arguing with the captain to let me off, and then I was in the lab, in a secluded wooded area one can only call some sort of dormitory. I knew there were other people there. I could hear them, but never saw anyone else besides the demons who kept torturing me. However, at this place, I don't remember seeing the devil. My last memories began on that April day in the hospital admitting office, preparing for surgery, and they didn't resurface for the next 13 days. Yes, I lost 13 days of reality. I was scheduled for my sixth spine surgery, yeah, number six. That began some 16 years ago as a result of several army injuries. I was rather confident that this surgery would finally reduce my pain that over the years has typically run at a seven or eight on a one to 10 pain scale. 
even on narcotic pain medication. It was always going to give me a real chance at becoming off the pain medication, something that my family wanted desperately, and I truly wanted to give them that. This surgery was going to be my largest to date, a complete fusion including vertebrae T10 to my sacrum, a fusion that ended up including 24 titanium screws up to 3 inches long, 3 titanium rods, and various other titanium connecting parts. This entire system was then covered by actual bone cells to properly solidify everything. My 36 centimeter wound was then closed by plastic surgery. Due to the size and the amount of the surgeries in the past, there was little skin left to close. This surgery lasted eight hours, and I have no memory of even going into the operating room. So as I stated earlier, I only remember the admitting office, which was early in the morning. I have no memory of waking up in recovery or getting settled in my room, so what do I remember? This is where the delirium began and the devil took hold of my mind, put me in his hell. For the next 13 days, I suffered like no one would have to suffer in their lifetime. The devil tried everything he could to make me suffer. I guess he thought he already had my soul. Phase 1, the ship. My suffering began on some sort of ship. It was most likely a cruise ship since I have a fear of cruises. And I'm sure the devil knew that. I had a small, fully lit room with a bed. I'm sure the light was another aspect of the situation. Considering there was absolutely no darkness, one would think. If I was in hell, wouldn't it be dark all the time? It was not. This was my hell, and I always had trouble in the light and enjoyed the night more. Plus, the army had given me so much night training, I felt more at ease in the darkness. There was constant daylight, and I was always awake. I never slept. Each long day was torturous, and I never knew what day it was or how long I'd been there. And even worse, how long I was going to be there. It was a cruise ship, with no other passengers on board except the demons, who tortured me with hate and loneliness. I remember them saying, you'll never go home, and no one loves you. And if that wasn't bad enough to hear repeatedly, they proceeded to physically torture me. I hurt all over. Not all demons actually did anything, but I remember being in great pain. All the demons were my pain tormentors. I vividly remember talking to the ship's captain, the devil. He came to me on several occasions. I pleaded to him to let me go home. He would respond, why? No one loves you. No one wants you around. And he would, he would bellow, you will never leave. His tone was always so direct, commanding, loud, and most of all, hateful. He had no understanding, and I was truly afraid to be in his presence. So what happened to me on the ship? I remember pain, not the pain in my back that I had been living with for so long, but pain over my entire body at a 10 out of 10. I remember at times it was hot, and I wasn't able to breathe, I could not find comfort no matter what I tried to do and the demons would never give me any comfort in word or in deed. I remember being administered drugs on an experimental basis just to see how I would react. The, de the demons never talked to me except to command me in, into certain positions and to make sure I didn't speak. I was told at all times to keep quiet. I was told I wouldn't leave, and as far as I was concerned, I was left for dead. The days dragged on. I tried to sleep but was kept awake constantly. I was not aware of my surroundings except for my small room and bed, my prison. Everything seemed so real as the days of light passed. The only way I knew time was passing was because the demons would replace the previous ones. Eventually a time came when the ship docked. I could hear other passengers leaving. I tried to leave myself, but before I got to the door of my prison, there was the devil yelling at me in his deep voice, commanding voice. You will never leave. Get back in your bed. There is no one waiting for you. My despair and loneliness increased tenfold. I thought I was the only person on the ship, and I was destined to remain in that small room alone and tortured. I, I was sure I was in hell, and the devil had my soul. My delirium at this point was raging in the real world. Real world. 
and I have no outward memory of any of my physical actions, as I am told I left the hospital very badly and continued to say and do wild and off-the-wall things while at home, being taken care of by my family. Moving into Phase 2, Laboratory in the Forest. After my last encounter with the devil, when, I was, when the cruise ship docked, I found myself transported to the next phase of the devil's torture. Hatred, confinement, and pain continued in some sort of experimentation laboratory. The lab was located in a forest region. There were trees everywhere. I did feel that some progress had been made to release me, but again found myself forcibly contained in a smaller bed, undergoing radiological testing and multiple operations. There was no light, no sleep. I was always conscious. I don't remember seeing the devil at this place, but there were sure a lot of demons doing his work of hate. During this phase of confinement, I was able to escape. I found myself lost in the trees without the strength to run. I was totally lost and eventually captured and returned to my small bed and room for more experimentation. My despair really became strong after my escape and capture. I felt helpless. This is when my miracle happened. This is when the devil was pulled out of me and I began seeing a gathering of angels. With all hope lost, I gave myself to the Lord. I had such an empty feeling inside and I remember saying, Lord God, I am yours. Do with me what you will. Just please give me the strength and show me how to get out of here. I began to flow to my back, and my arms were outstretched into the air. All around me was a gathering of angels wearing wings. Then I saw it. I was now immersed in the brightest, most golden light one could imagine. It filled the sky and was all around me, and I felt in my heart a feeling of relief, happiness, and love. The feeling of love just flowed in around me. I knew then God was pulling the devil out of me and saving my soul. I felt God's unconditional love as well as the love of my family and so many others. I knew then that the devil was so full of lies and I had family and friends who did want me and God made it possible for me to feel their love by filling me with the Holy Spirit. Although I was still confined, I was no longer alone. My heart was so full of love, the devil and his demons could have done anything they wanted to me. Moving to phase three, the dormitory. I was still confined when I entered the next phase of my mind's hell. This was a dormitory of sorts. I still had no sleep, no food, and no interactions with any other human beings. I knew there were others in a dormitory like me. I could hear their screams and moans, pleading to be freed. I felt differently about being in this place. Don't get me wrong, I was still confined, and the experiments continued. However, I did not feel the despair, the sadness, the hopelessness, or even loneliness. What was it different about this place? I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and still basking in the golden light of God. I knew it just a matter of time before the devil realized that he had lost, and I was protected by the Lord. God's promise of light and love were now guiding me back to my family and friends. The devil did try to make things a little easier in this place because he saw he was losing, not being fully accepted. He had lost my soul, true God, my light, and my love. The devil just could not accept how strong the light of the Holy Spirit is, and he should give up his fight for my soul. I woke up from my mind's hell in the hospital to a loving family and hospital staff that wanted me and saved my physical life. God saved my soul, and the doctors and nurses with the help of the Lord saved my body. The first words I spoke were, Thank God he came to me, and I remember everything. I cried tears of joy with every visitor from happiness and the fullness of the light of our Savior. A few days later, I came home, and my life-serving God has taken a different route than in the past. I have always known I am a sinner. I have always believed in Jesus, the Son of God, who had died for our sins. I went to church. I served in various capacities, even as a Eucharistic minister, serving Holy Communion to those in need. I always tried to help my fellow man and share what I had. However, 
I did not know if God was truly in my heart and did not believe in the devil. Now I am filled with the Holy Spirit and I know that God is in my life to love me and protect my soul and me from harm. I know that God loves me unconditionally and I will never let him down. I love him with all my heart and only hope that I can live up to the great gift God has given me, my soul. I now know there is a devil. The devil can try to get my soul. I am sure he hates losing, but I am filled with the Holy Spirit and covered in the blanket of unconditional love from the Lord. There is no better feeling in my heart than the golden light of God covering me and keeping the true darkness of the devil away. Let the devil try what he may. I have God on my side, and his love will protect me forever. I remember everything and always will. And we close in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Okay, there it is. That's the story. I, uh, I hope you, uh, I don't know, not necessarily enjoyed it, but uh, you see where I came from. You see what happened to me. But uh, it, it, it's a wonderful, wonderful feeling now that I have God in my heart. So, again, if you want one of these things, uh, send me a note, and I'll get one to you. Okay, that's it. I, I will talk to you guys next time. Have a great day or week, month. Stay safe. Stay healthy. See you later. Bye-bye.